Hi, this is Greg Green from Flip Schools, and one of the things that we want to go over is lesson planning, and and many of us um, teachers who've been teaching for ten years or more have seen Madeline Hunter's work in lesson planning, and really want to kind of review that with you because many of us went through that process, but you know how does that apply to the flip classroom? And many evaluators use it still today, so we wanted to kind of look at Madeline Hunter's work and then how that applies to the flipped classroom. Well, one of the things that Madeline Hunter says is that there's eight different things that go into a lesson, and there's the objective, there's you know getting students ready, there's, you know, we're stating the learning objective so students know exactly what's to be expected. We identify and teach the main objective, and then we check for understanding. We have some guided practice in class, independent practice, and closure at the end. And so that kind of sums everything up. So. Let's take a look at how um, creating a video in the flip and also what the classroom starts to look like within the, in the and especially with our lesson planning. So when you're looking at the learning objective, when you meet with teachers and discuss uh, who's going to do the video, what um, standards are you going to you know, teach during that video and have you, you're looking at national standards, you're looking at state standards, that's, you know, identifying the learning objective and who's going to teach it is is part of the, the Madeline Hunter process. So um, that's one. Two, anticipatory set. You know, teachers now um, implement videos and pictures and, and really get students excited about learning and, and how that connects to their everyday life. And you're able to bring in those types of things to the screen capture video process, and then you never, whereas, whereas you never did that much before. You also, during the video creation process, you want to state the learning objective right at the beginning. So you really don't have the need to put it on the board so much is because they have the video right in front of them that they're watching, so they know the, the objective and they can re repeat that video as many times as they like. Also, when you identify and teach the main objective, you have a, an expert within a video reviewing the main ideas. And the greatest thing is you can go beyond your school and get as much expertise as you need. And so you really have an expert individual reviewing content. And like I said before, uh, you can repeat that video as many times as you need. The other thing is the classroom. The classroom itself is really, so you've looked at four different things already just with the video creation process. So now when you want to check for understanding, that's where the classroom begins. Because you can give your students a quiz or look at their notes or um, provide some sort of uh, formative assessment when they come in the door that checks their understanding of what the content um, that they had watched. And also allows you to make it an important part of the process. As we talked about that, in order for students to watch video outside of your class, you have to make it part of part of your process. It has to be a graded activity. Um, also, guided practice. You know, teachers can take the video that was shown and actually go step by step for you know ten minutes of class, so that students have a clear understanding of what's expected of them, or a clear understanding of the material. We shouldn't just, just show the video and, and just let it go. The video should be part of the instructional process. The other thing is that students now can do independent practice while the teacher walks around the classroom assisting every single student to make sure that they're on task. You can also do teacher-led groups, a small number of those. You can also do some independent learning for students so if students learn independently better than in groups. Great. If students learn uh, next to one another in small groups, that's great too. So you can differentiate the way that students learn within your learning environment um, by just having your lecture on video. And also closure. You know, a teacher or even a student uh, can summarize, you know, what went on in class that day. You can provide another check for understanding exercise at the end, you know, to make sure that you know what students um, know at the end of your lesson, and so it can help guide your instruction the next day. So this is an example of Madeline Hunter uh, in an overview of how it applies to the full classroom. Thank you.